Hi everyone, I'm Adam, and we're so excited to spend time worshiping with you this morning. We're gonna have a great service, and I can't wait to get started. Before we get into it, I encourage you to get active in the chat. Say hi, or better yet, try finding an emoji that represents your favorite Christmas present from yesterday. Then take a second to hit the share button and invite some friends to join you. And if for some reason you're not seeing the chat, just click the link below to continue watching on YouTube or Facebook Live, and that should get you connected to the community. If this is your first time with us at Trello Church, we are so excited that you're spending part of your weekend with us. We wanna to get to know you better. It's easy to get connected. You could drop a note in the chat and say, I'm new, or click the link below to fill out our connect card. We have some amazing greeters who would love to say hello and answer any questions you have. And don't forget that our care and prayer team is ready to pray with you. If you have a need or are just looking for some support, comment below or send an email to care at trailhead.church. They would love to reach out to you. And all right, I think we're almost ready to jump into the good stuff. Get ready because service begins in just a few minutes.
give Him the highest praises.
Hey everyone, and welcome to Church at Home. I'm Josh, and this is my wife, Anna. We're the pastor of Charlotte Church, and we're so thankful that you've turned on your device or your television to tune in to church the day after Christmas. Hopefully everyone is still wearing their Christmas PJs. Oh, we should... That's what we should have on, our Christmas yeah. PJs. Actually, no. We need all of you all to now go get dressed up. We'll give you the time. <laughs> I don't think Too we're going to wait that long. Too much. Too much. <laughs> Too much. Well, hey, listen, no different. Uh, regular church. We are celebrating Jesus all the time, 24-7. So we're just pumped that you are joining us and having church at your house. So just like every other Sunday, or every Sunday, not every other <laughs> Sunday, every Sunday we receive offering. You know, in James chapter 1, verse 17, it says that he gives us the best gifts, right. and all good gifts come from above. Well, guess what? 
You know, celebrating Christmas, we celebrated Jesus Christ, the best gift ever. And so in the word of God, God instructs us all sorts of different ways to be good stewards of our finances. And then also to bring in our tithes and our offerings into his storehouse. And when we do that, he protects our storehouses. So it's important that we give. So right now, below me are all the different ways you can give. So if you want to text to give, if you want to give through your smartphone, your tablet device, it's all right there. It's safe and secure. And for those that are still old school like myself, you can hold on to your offering till next Sunday when we are back in person. Or you could actually mail it in to 615 West Harden Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. So I love giving on the app. And if you don't have the app, you need to get it. Yes, there's all because, sorts of good stuff oh, on there. And all of the resources, uh, it has our women's conference resource stuff on there. Yeah. Like it's a great resource. And uh, I love giving on the app because it's an easy way to sow into the kingdom of God. And as I sow, I know what I'm giving into and that it's going to produce a harvest, not only in God's kingdom, but in my own personal household because I am a part of God's kingdom. Right. So I'm going to pray. We're going to receive the offering and then we're going to get right into our message this morning. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you as we bring our tithes, our offerings into your storehouse. God, we are so thankful and just so beyond blessed, Lord, in all the things you do and keeping us knit together. God, I thank you, Lord, for the body of believers and that you're meeting every need. God, I thank you, Lord, that your will is being done in this house and throughout our community. So God, we are so thankful for you, Lord, and honoring you this season, Lord, and knowing that you sent your son to die on the cross so that, Lord, that he could raise from the grave so that we could be saved. So Lord, we thank you for this. Lord, we honor you. We love you. We praise you. And in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So my wife and I are pretty pumped about this morning's message. Um, For some of you, you may say Christmas is over, Pastor Josh. I don't want to talk about it anymore. (laughs) Well, it's not over because one of the things we want to talk about is joy. And joy just isn't uh, joy to the world during Christmas season. Right. This is a supernatural joy that the Lord wants you to have all year round. And I hope today that we hammer it to the point where we just, we're over the top. That's seriously, I was praying and I thought, Lord, I want us to be so, so over the top with scriptures on joy and talking about your joy, that that joy gets stirred up on the inside of you because there are many of you right now that you just feel like you've been depleted. And that you need that joy stirred up. You recognize that this is joy from the the Lord. It's a joy that the world didn't give and that the world can't take away. And God is going to produce this in your life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. Absolutely. So I want to say some few things here. Just like my wife started off by saying that joy isn't something that is just one time of the year. It's not seasonal. No. It's not something that... You just uh, choose to have uh, on a uh, maybe an every other day moment or a once a week moment. Joy should be seized every single day all the time. And that's what's so beautiful about Psalm 23, that no matter where we are in life, guess what? God comforts us. God is with us. And we can choose joy and we can see through the midst of darkness. We can see through all some pain and hurt. And we can choose joy. You know, people who choose uh, joy stand out in the midst of darkness. Guys, that's huge. There's a lot of darkness at times. And for us, we need to be that shining light for people. We need to be a beacon of hope through Jesus Christ for others to see that no matter what the circumstance is, guess what? God's bigger. So I love Psalm 118, 24 says, the Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. So this is a choice. Let us, let us rejoice. Let us be glad. You know, we dedicate so much energy, so much energy and strength to yesterday and tomorrow. Man, think about this, right? And then you feel like you have no joy for today. Right. When God has joy for you today, and he said that he wants you to give him your yesterdays, to give him your tomorrows, and that the joy, that his joy will be your strength for today. Right. A scripture that I've loved that I've been meditating on during this entire season is found in Luke chapter 2, and uh, in verses 10 and 11, and it says, the angel said to them, 
Uh, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which would be to all people. I'm going to stop there. That the angel is giving us good tidings of what? Great joy. Not just joy, great joy. And then he says it's to all people. It's not just to some of us. It's not to those who lived this charmed life. No, that's not what we're talking about today. Then he goes on to say, For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Whenever you study this out, that word joy actually talks about the source of joy. That great joy means I'm giving you good tidings about the source of your joy. So who is the source of your joy? It's Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, it, that's period. It. Jesus. So as we get into today's message and into these scriptures, I want you to be so focused right inside that Jesus is the source of my joy. So for today, I know as I'm walking through my life of wherever you're at, no matter what you're going through, that if I have Jesus, I have joy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know, I... I think some of the very first steps that we need to recognize in our lives is really to receive each day as a gift. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's really important. By receiving today as a gift of not tomorrow, not yesterday, because tomorrow we know is not planned. Or sorry, not planned, not promised. And so yesterday, it's gone. So for us, we've got to receive today as a true gift. You know, for us, uh, for me and Anna, you know, there are moments where, sure, we have mo like occasions that come up where we go, man, that's just not fun. That's not fun. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. But we've got to choose joy and we look at it and go, but you know what? We get to do this. We get to learn. So that brings me to James chapter one, uh, verses two through five. It says, Com consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Guys, I think for some of us, we've got to draw up some joy from that deep well in your heart. And you know, guess what? Your circumstances will change. So begin to look at today as a gift. Begin to recognize that no matter the highs or the lows, no matter what the circumstance is going to happen, this is us to consider it pure joy that we can lean into the Father and ask Him for what we need. In Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3, it says, Therefore, with joy, you will draw from the wells of salvation. So whenever we have to consider it or count it all joy, then we have to ourselves, that's on us where we say, I'm going to have to draw with joy. There's a demonstration behind that. That's a step of faith and an action step based upon knowing who Jesus is in your life. So the biblical definition of joy is, not de is dependent upon who Jesus is, not dependent upon our circumstances. This is a supernatural joy that is given to us from the Holy Spirit, and it confirms the very power and person and works of Jesus Christ in our lives. So when we abide in God's word and when we abide in God's presence, then we then can rejoice in the Lord from a position of joy that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Because people will read that scripture and they're like, wait, how can I count it all joy when I'm going through something so challenging and so difficult? Because you recognize that the Holy Spirit has given you joy. And it's through the power of the Holy Spirit that you draw from that well of salvation. And then you can count it all joy knowing that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Remember, Jesus is the source of your joy every single day. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. You know, I, I'm thinking about my very first statement that by choosing joy, you're really, um, you're changing the darkness that's around you. And I think about how there's, the world's watching. The world is watching. They're, they are looking for hope. They're looking for salvation. And by you knowing that salvation and knowing that hope, this is where joy is that indicator of you actually knowing that salvation and that hope. So when people look for that, the world is watching. It's going to be important that they are drawn to the creator. And it's through you that you're a, a, a vessel 
here on earth right now in this present time for the kingdom of God. And there's a spring bubbling up on the inside of you. And it's Jesus. He's yeah. living water. Yeah. He's the well that never runs dry. That's why he says with joy, we draw from that well of salvation. Maybe you feel dry and dusty right now. Maybe you feel like you've been walking through a desert land. There is joy as you walk through this land. The joy of the Lord will strengthen you as you continue to go through. And Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Listen, we're going to overload you with scriptures on joy. I'm excited about it. It says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, which we all just, I mean, we've had so much Chex Mix this past month, right? Like, Cheesecake. I mean, we're, we're done. All right. Finished. But it says that the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness or of righteousness, of peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That our life in the kingdom of God is about being right standing, living for Jesus, knowing that he's the prince of peace on the inside of you and that you have joy in the Holy Spirit. So joy given from the Holy Spirit, that means joy will endure all seasons. This is his joy. Remember, this is a supernatural joy. This is abiding joy. Joy rejoices in all seasons. And then joy brings strength in all seasons. Have you ever been in a worship service and uh, it's just was, it's been, you had a hard week and you walk into church and you think, Lord, I don't know. I don't even know why I'm here. You know, you've had those moments where you think this has been so challenging, but you knew you needed to be there. And then you begin to worship the Lord and you begin to rejoice and give God glory, honor, and praise. And you feel those weights just lift off your shoulders and you rejoice. And then his joy becomes your strength. And right in the middle of something, not only do you have joy to strengthen you, but you start to see that challenge or that circumstance or that difficulty through the eyes of Jesus. Yeah. And you see it full of peace and full of hope. And you see it healed and restored. There's joy for your marriage today. There's joy for how you raise your children. Maybe you've been fussing all the time and you need joy. Well, guess what? The joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So you just got to press in and stir it up and get in the word of God, which we'll talk about that in a second. And you will have joy as you parent or as you love on your spouse. If you're single and you feel alone, you're not alone. Yeah. There's joy in being single that you can enjoy this season where God is placing you of growth. There's joy for us in every season. Right, absolutely. So we've got a few keys for you. I want to say we have three, but I'm sure we've got a few more, which is totally fine. I, but I, I'm into this. I know. I love this. I'm Keys excited. to joy. Number one key to joy is laugh. That's hard for a lot of people to laugh. Some people have a... Um, Anna likes to call it a... Uh, oh, the resting face? No, 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 no. A spirit of infirmity. And it's not... She's calling oh, it this... No, scripturally speaking, that you right. glorify in these spirits of infirmity where you now are identifying with the attack of Satan on your life that this is who you think you are and this is just how life will always be. Right. So you know, we you have a difficult right, time... Right. Just rejoicing in the middle... We rebuke that spirit of infirmity right. in Jesus' name. We take authority over it. And this is where we get in and you allow that joy to bubble up. It is life and life in abundance. I mean, think of, the, think of your salvation of Jesus setting you free, making you whole, restoring you, knowing when you know this, you can laugh in the face of adversity. Right. So Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, it says, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Sometimes you just got to deep down inside right. do a belly laugh. And rejoice. And rejoice. Someone texted me the other day, um, and they were saying, you know, they had a bad day. And I kind of laughed. I said, you know, one of the things, there's, we have a lot of Gresham House rules. Hey, Gresham House rule number 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, when things go bad, take off your shirt and do a belly dance. <laughs> All right? So it's time to start laughing. It's time to rejoice and just be silly. It takes that. And surround yourself with people who appreciate that. People who can laugh with you, make it happen, all right? Key number two. Boy, this is a big one. This is probably the best one, actually, and it's grateful. You need to be grateful. Mm -hmm. 
you need to be thankful. You got to be thankful. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, it says, always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. When you begin to be thankful, your outlook on your circumstance changes. When you realize, you know what? My job isn't that bad. You know, today this happened at work and it was good. If you surround yourself with all the negativity, if you surround yourself with negativity with your children, your friends, whoever you work with, your coworkers, a lot of times it can just be a downhill spiral. You tank, you tank yeah. very fast. And so being thankful of who you are, what God's doing. Maybe it's thankful for the parking spot you got today. Maybe it's thankful for the kind gesture a stranger gave you. Who knows what it is, but it's holding on to that thankfulness, being grateful and saying, you know what? This was good. This was good. Because a lot of times we just kind of come home with a, a habit of all the negativity, not all the good. So changing, shifting how you're perceiving the day to be is really going to help. I've got two things. Okay. All right. First, I just had a lovely friend give me a little gratitude journal. And each page, it has spots where you can write down what you're thankful for. And it keeps your eyes focused on gratitude, on what God's doing in your life. And get your eyes focused off all of the other things which are so easily distracting during this season and during this time of everything we've been going through the last couple of years. So you've got to be intentional with gratitude and thankfulness. And the second thing is, one thing that the Lord helped me and he gave me, he always gives me these beautiful visual pictures is uh, flipping the switch on the situation. So a couple of years ago, I was out of town uh, with all four children and we had a day where it was a day and I was disciplining them in public like everywhere we went and it was crazy. And I got extremely embarrassed about it and I called Josh up and I said, I am so embarrassed right now because of our kids. Like, this is a really hard day, and I feel like I'm a terrible parent. Because isn't that how the enemy goes? Like, he immediately accuses us like we're just failing at everything when you have a rough day and tries to zap our joy of, of all the things. And Joshua, he gave me a beautiful word of correction, which I needed. He said, I want you to stop that right now. You're a great mom. And because you're disciplining our children, that shows what a great parent you are. He goes, so don't allow the enemy to come in and, and compare or you know, make you think, well, all these people are looking and all these people are saying these things. Who cares? You're disciplining our kids, and that's what God calls us to do. You're doing a great job. So you know, I got that pep talk. I needed it. It was good. I get off the phone with him and right on the inside, the Holy Spirit says, I want you to flip the switch because I discipline those whom I love and you're disciplining your kids because you love them. So think of this as a good thing. So my encouragement to you, and then I got joy. I brought joy. I was like, that's right. I'm a great mom. Like we're doing it. You know, we're raising and training godly kids. And it's hard and it's challenging at times, but this is what the word says. And Lord, you know, help me to do this. So my encouragement to you with this, with gratitude and even laughter and what we're talking about, Jesus is the source of your joy. Flip the switch on what the enemy's trying to accuse you of or to call negative in your day and say, no, I invite the Lord into this situation. And God, I want you to come in and paint a new picture for what's happening right now, right? right. When we do that, it changes our perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So my third key and my final key, I believe, is... Uh, we've got to spend time with the Lord. If you want joy, yes. you've got to spend time with Him. So in Psalm 37, 4, it says, Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. When your desires of your heart are fulfilled, there's joy in that. And it comes from delighting in the Lord, being, right. being in tuned, being attentive to what He's saying, listening to what He's saying. Gosh, it's so important. But then applying it and walking in it. Now, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. He's near. That's important, people. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So by spending time with him, you get joy. That's 
That's it. It's that simple. And remember, laugh. We need to laugh. We need to be grateful, have a heart that's thankful, and then spending time with him. It's important. Okay. I'm so happy this is your last point <laughs> because I've got, I've got some good stuff here. In John chapter 15, which is a wonderful chapter, we talk about abiding in Christ, okay? In verse 11, it says, these things, this is Jesus, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. God wants his joy to remain in us and it to be a fullness of joy. This is Jesus. Okay, so what are these things that he was speaking to us? And this goes exactly with that about abiding. In uh, verses four through eight, it says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. God wants you to bear much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. Then he says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Then he goes on to tell us that if you keep his commandments, you'll abide in his love as he's kept his father's commandments. So in order to have his joy, Joy remain in us and that joy to be full, then we need to abide in Christ, abide in his word, and then abide in his love. That word abide means to remain or to stay with him. That whenever you're going through hard things, you don't run away, right? You don't run and hide in a cave. Right. You don't go somewhere off by yourself. You say, Lord, I am sticking with you. Yeah. I'm remaining in your word. I'm going to remain with Christ Jesus and his joy is going to fill me up. And that joy will always point to the love of Jesus. Yep. That joy is, is pure and holy and righteous. And it's a demonstration of joy. That's why we talked about laughter and, and gratitude and having a merry heart. Christians should look joyful. Right. We should demonstrate this to the world of just what God's doing in our lives. But the only way to do it is in Christ Jesus. We can't do it outside of him because our joy comes from him. Remember, it's a supernatural joy. It's an abiding joy, a staying joy. I've got another scripture I want to read. This scripture has been one of my go-tos this entire past year, the set of scripture in Psalm chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. It says, but let all those who rejoice... Let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as with a shield. That our part as we laugh and rejoice and have gratitude and abide in him is that we trust in him. And when we trust in the Lord, we can shout for joy because he's defending us. You know, we shouldn't have a quiet church. We should have a church that comes in rejoicing, that comes in shouting, that comes in thanking God for who he is and what's, what he's doing, that comes in laughing because of how good God is right. and his faithfulness, because he's defending us and because we've placed our love in his name, the name above all names. The source of our joy, the greater one living on the inside of us. We have joy. We have purpose in his name because it's Jesus. And your joy was paid for on the cross, given to us by the Holy Spirit. And it's an abiding, lasting joy that will remain, that's going to produce such good fruit in your home and your family. We want you to live joyful today. And it's not happiness. Happiness is fleeting. Joy is from the inside out. It's supernatural. It's born in our spirit. Right. That's good. Hey, listen, if you need anything at all, you can contact the church at info at trailhead.church. We'd love to know what's going on. If you need prayer, let us know. We want to come in agreement with you. Stand in agreement with you to see the victory That's take right. place. So let us know. We're so thankful you joined us here this morning. You know, it is an honor uh, to be your pastor and we are just so thankful for what God's doing at and through Trailhead Church. 
but we're really excited about 2022. That's right. We're believing for big things, and I encourage you to come out and visit and join us next Sunday at 10 a.m. It's going to be a fantastic service. I'm going to cast some vision, some upfront new things that are coming. It's going to be awesome. God's doing great things, and 2022 is a year of harvest. Yes. We're excited, and you are a part of it, and we're going into 2022 with joy, yeah, right? absolutely. The joy of the Lord. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next Sunday. Love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We hope you were able to take away some important truths that you can dig into this week. If you want to make a change in your life by choosing to follow Jesus, we want to pray with you. In fact, if there's anything you need, just comment below or shoot us an email and one of our care and prayer volunteers will be in touch with you as soon as possible. And don't forget to share this service with your friends and make sure you click the follow button on Facebook and Instagram to stay connected with your church family throughout the week. We love you all.